Parents and teachers in Muskegon Heights are fed up over staffing shortages and a lack of resources. And tonight they are taking those frustrations right to the school board. We have team coverage. A special meeting happening right now to address some of those concerns. We have crews there live following what's happening. Plus, Elena Holland is covering some of the financial struggles the district has faced over the years. But first, let's start with Charlie Tinker. Charlie, this has been evolving since last week. Yeah, Val, I'm going to try to be a little quiet because the uh, meeting is just about to get underway here in the room behind me. Uh, if you joined us at 5.30, if you joined us at 5 o'clock, you saw dozens of people outside protesting in front of the high school, demanding the answers they turned to us for last week, uh, answers they simply felt they weren't getting from the district, from the uh, charter management organization that took charge in August uh, for themselves and for their children. They aim to get those answers tonight. The people that's supposed to be protecting and educating our kids are letting them down. The mother of a junior and senior at Muskegon Heights High School who asked to remain anonymous turned to 13 on your side for answers last week, claiming a missing curriculum, even some school books. For the school to say, well, we can't hold the kids responsible, they'll still graduate is not right. A lot of days it's just like, I, I don't know if I can make it. High school English teacher Ty Ross told us last week he was one of only five certified teachers on staff there. He said the district would need at least 12 more to close the gap and ensure their students receive an education. I don't want them to fail, especially in the big picture. And high school isn't all of it, but if these kids leave high school without a high school diploma, there are a lot of sh doors that are shut in their face. We sent a crew and showed up at the Detroit-based charter management firm in charge of the district since August and got this response when we asked for a new Paradigm founder, Ralph Bland. Unfortunately, today he's not available. He's not in the building. The board later issued a statement through an attorney countering several of those claims, saying nearly all classrooms were fully staffed and that they were working to fill vacancies. And they just trying to cover their tracks, man. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy that they sending stuff out right now, but when we was asking them for answers, they never sent stuff out. It's the games they playing, man. It's like, you're playing with our kids' lives, so what do we supposed to do? This is, this is serious. We did chat with several of the protesters ahead of uh, the meeting tonight. That did seem to be the consensus among all of the folks that we chatted with. Uh, I did, uh, again, try a new paradigm, and its founder, Ralph Bland. He uh, did get on the phone with me just shortly before airtime at 5 o'clock. He acknowledged many of the concerns that have been put out there were valid. However, he again uh, did blame the nation, national teacher shortage for a good chunk of that problem. Uh, when I said that uh, most folks seem to believe this goes well beyond that, well beyond what other districts may be experiencing as a result of those shortages, he did say that they were working aggressively with several organizations to hire and attract and retain some new talent to put into the classroom here and also said that many of the issues that have been broached regarding curriculum, missing curriculum, missing books, those have been addressed or will be addressed as of this week. We have another crew here inside the meeting that will keep you posted with a full report tonight at 11 o'clock. Meantime, live in Muskegon Heights, Charlie Tinker, 13 on your side. Thank you, Charlie, and officials with the city of Muskegon Heights say they are working with the school district to address these concerns. City manager Troy Bell sent us a statement saying in part, the city will collaborate and cooperate with the school district on all levels, realizing the work we both do directly affects the fine residents and families of our community. The Muskegon Heights School District parents and students have had to endure a lot over the years, and that includes a state takeover. 13 on your signs, Elena Holland is in our newsroom now with a look back at the district's financial struggles. Well, hi, good evening. In 2011, Muskegon Public School District was facing about $12 million in a budget deficit. Its Board of Education voted to have a state-run emergency manager to face these financial challenges. In 2012, then-Governor Rick Snyder began a financial review, which decided the district had a financial emergency, and then he appointed an emergency manager. The district became the Muskegon Heights Public School Academy system, and the entire district was turned over to a for-profit charter. In 2016, the emergency manager's term ended. Governor Snyder appointed a receivership for the transition back to local control. In 2020, things were looking up when a state report showed progress at the district and it received the highest possible benchmark, including increased teacher retention rate and a viable curriculum. The following year, in 2021, Governor Whitmer officially released Muskegon Heights School District from the receivership. So that means since last year, the district has been under local control once again. So that leads us to this year, as parents continue to complain about not having enough teachers at their school for the kids. 
Uh, last week, the spokesperson for the firm representing the district responded saying it is working out kinks and dealing with the national critical teacher shortage. Thank you, Elena. 13 on your side. We'll stay on top of the story. We will have complete coverage of tonight's school board meeting on 13 on your side late night at 11 as well as 13onyourside.com.